Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. And uh, let's introduce ourselves. So um, if you haven't met me before, my name is Cody. I'm the, uh, well, I'm, I'm several things here due to, <laughs> I, I do education and getting here due to, uh, and I'm really excited to have uh, Brad with us today. So if you guys aren't familiar uh, with Podium, uh, Podium is a service that uh, helps you manage your online reviews. And Dude is actually a, a customer of Podium. So uh, to let you know, um, we uh, we actually started using Podium uh, a few, uh, I think six months ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, we we discovered that our Google reviews rating was not so good. I checked with our support manager; it was like a 1.3, uh, and this was something that we noticed. You know, we're not a retail location; we don't have customers coming to our business all the time. You know, we're an online company, uh, but still, we you know uh, we noticed that and that these reviews were negatively affecting us. So even uh, when I was typing in directions from the office to somewhere to go to dinner with my girlfriend, she saw on the maps that when I typed in our address that we were rated a 1.3 on Google reviews. And she's like, wow, I thought you worked for a good website company. And I was like, I do. It just, these are just the reviews that we have. The customers, they find us here, you know. It was really kind of embarrassing. And think about it from our perspective, even as like a corporation that doesn't even deal with retail clients, you know, we have partners, business partners, business development uh, contacts that are finding directions to our office, and they're still seeing these negative reviews. So even us, we don't really deal face-to-face -face with retail customers. It was still negatively affecting us. So we decided to do something about it, and that's when we uh, discovered Podium, and we decided to give them a try. Uh, so our customer success team started using Podium to contact uh, people who just had good experiences, had good things to say about us, uh, and our score went from a 1.3 on Google reviews up to a 4.4. So if you look at it now, we show four and a half stars right there on Google reviews if you look us up, and we're really happy with that. Our CEO is much happier with that. As a company, we're much hap happier about that. I'm confident when I go to type in our address into Google Maps now and get directions anywhere in front of anyone, it's so much nicer. And we were able to turn around our review time on this from a 1.3 to a 4.4 in less than two months. So we were really thrilled with this, and that's one of the reasons why we're really excited to have Brad from Podium here to talk with you guys. Uh, because this is a whole new world of online reviews, and we want to, uh, Brad's going to give you an introduction to online reviews and uh, kind of go over why they're important, discuss some common traps that you guys can avoid uh, if you're thinking about getting into review management, uh, and then also probably more importantly talk about how you guys can use online reviews to make your businesses the highest rated agencies in your area, and how you can also use them to offer online review management to your customers. So increase your service offerings and create another revenue stream uh, for your agency. So uh, with that, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Brad from Podium. Brad, say hello. Thanks, Cody. Really uh, appreciate the introduction. And I remember actually uh, coming into the offices the very first time to talk about a, a general partnership and really uh, do that. You guys weren't willing to even talk about a partnership at all until uh, you could get your own reviews kind of in control. And so I, I remember selling that first license to you guys and <laughs> just uh, a call three weeks later of just uh, elation from your team of, of kind of a wow, it worked. So i uh, really, really glad to have been able to help uh, Duda. And really our goal there is to, to have you be represented as who you really are, not as what the vocal minority was saying about you. So again, really happy to be on and be able to talk about uh, really reviews and uh, the three traps to avoid. Nice. So yeah, it's been a real positive change here at Duda. Once, uh, once those positive reviews started coming in, everyone was stoked. So we're very, very excited to have you as well. Great. Uh, to, just to run through the agenda so you can prepare yourselves, uh, we're going to start off just talking about the importance of online reviews. We won't spend too much time on that. I'm sure you're on here uh, already because you know the importance, so we'll go quickly through that. Uh, then we'll hop into the, the three traps to avoid. Uh, when uh, really going down the online review path, uh, then we'll go to leveraging reviews for your clients, and then I'll just tell you a little bit about Podium, and then we'll we'll go into some Q and A. So and, uh, just a, oh, I'm sorry, Brad. Just one okay. thing uh, before we get to uh, Q and A, uh, you guys, uh, if you have questions as we go through, type them into the questions box, and then Brad and I will save time at the end to 
to go through uh, through your questions. So if you have questions going along, just go ahead and type them in, and we'll try our best to get to as many questions as possible uh, at the end of the webinar. Great. So uh, to start off, I want uh, maybe each of you to think about the last time that you read a review. Uh, you probably, if you're like most people, if you think about that product or service you read about, it, it was sometime in the last week that you actually consumed uh, an online review. So now the second question I want you to ask yourself is, when was the last time that you posted a review? And again, if you're like most people, the last time you actually wrote a review was, could have been months ago, if ever. In fact, a lot of people have never written an online review. And the reason I want you to think of those two things in your own personal life is to really help show the gap right now that exists between the way that uh, consumers are intaking reviews or reading reviews versus how much they're actually posting them. And there's a big gap between those two. And that gap represents an opportunity uh, for, for us as agencies and a uh, technology solution to, to, really, uh, to really help uh, bridge that gap. So uh, the importance of online reviews to kind of get started here, uh, there's a lot of stats around it. You can go uh, search online and find a lot of these stats, but there's the three that are highlighted in orange are the ones I want to call out right now. Is 95% of all local purchases will be driven by reviews. So when you're, when you're looking at a store or going somewhere, uh, you are looking at reviews, whether you like it or not, because as you type in a location, just similar to uh, looking up due to mobile, uh, you'll actually see the, the ratings there. So people are seeing those reviews and driving purchases. 87% of consumers will not even consider a business with a low rating. Uh, th again, this is a, you can do a gut check yourself to figure out if you're looking at a product and you see that somebody has a 2.6 rating, uh, are you going to really want to go see that business? Um, most of the time you'll just type in something different or, or pick a higher rated business. And then the last one is 84% of consumers trust online reviews as much as a per personal recommendation. So uh, it, it's nonsensical that if you know somebody I know, I've known and I've grown up with is telling me that something is good, that I am placing almost the same amount of uh, trust in what uh, random people online are saying about a business, but, uh, but they do. So again, uh, reviews, they're really driving uh, buying behaviors and helping people make buying decisions. So then the uh, kind of related to that is how are consumers using reviews in the buying process? And there's three basic steps to look at how they're using these reviews. First, they're using reviews to find a business. Second, they're using reviews to validate uh, if what they found is good. And then the final one is to make a choice. And I've got a few uh, personal uh, stories that will kind of uh, illuminate these points. So the first one, this picture here, I, I, you know, don't laugh too hard. Uh, on the right-hand side, that's a picture of uh, four of my five kids in our garage. And yes, they are sitting in a hot tub in my garage, which my wife is eternally embarrassed about that I actually put an uh, inflatable hot tub in my garage. But the story of, of actually getting that into my garage was and really how, how I found out about it is that uh, I was just scrolling through uh, Amazon, um, not, not this last Christmas or the Christmas before, and I was just looking through products that were highly rated, and sure enough, this Coleman Lazy Spa showed up, and I found it tr truly only because of, of the reviews. So out of the gate, you, you can go back to your own personal life and how you, you find things. Um, you'll, you'll see that reviews play a point there. The second story is around that of validation. So this is another product I bought. This is a uh, I bought this maybe three years ago. This is a, a camera for my um, my baby's room, so we can you know check up on her while she's sleeping. And uh, I, had, I had a friend who had uh, had bought a similar camera, and he was really raving about it. And I, I was kind of sold on his brand, but not fully. And I went to look up his brand. And when I looked up his brand, I actually saw this one there as well and it had such high ratings. Um, I went and read through the reviews, I read through the content, and after I read through the content, I realized that it had the features that I wanted, and I was, I was able to, uh, to pull the trigger and make this purchase. So again, in the validation stage, uh, this goes back to that same stat that I shared earlier, which is trusting uh, online reviews uh, 
I trusted those more than my friend in that case. Uh, he recommended a different one. This is the one I bought really because of those reviews were so overwhelmingly positive for this BIM tag. And then finally, um, the choosing process. Uh, again, this is that the stat that I shared with the 87% of consumers say they won't even consider a business with bad reviews. Uh, look at this. If you were uh, choosing which place to go get some uh, auto care and you're looking at a 3, a 4.4, or a 5, you know, there's different ways that you'll actually look at this. You, you'll look at the, some of you would will pick the five-star rating because it's five stars. Uh, some of you will pick the the 4.4 star rating because you'll look at those 85 reviews that are posted there and you'll say, hey, well, with 85 people, that's a big enough sample of a 4.4 star rating that I'm not going to get burned. So I'm going to go to the 4.4. But uh, very few of you would actually go choose the three-star one because you use that review um, to that star rating to help not make your choice on what you are going to choose, but you definitely use it to weed out the, the what you don't want to use. So that's where the that that low that bad review rating can really hurt you and your customers. Uh, and even when they do get found, they'll be yanked out of that, that funnel um, if that if that's not high enough. So the the question here is. How are businesses using reviews to grow their business? And on our side, we have uh, similarly three things: uh, get found, get chosen, and get insights. So when we when we have customers who come and, and want to get more reviews, these are the reasons why they they do it. So the first one is getting found. Um, I actually I wasn't on this webinar, but hear that uh, recently in the last couple of months, you guys actually had Andrew from Local SEO Guide come on and share his findings. In in uh, in a webinar here at Duda, and uh, that's correct. We we did. So if if uh, if any of you guys would like to watch that webinar, it's uh, it's in the resources center, resources.dudamobile.com. Just click on the webinars tab, and uh, you guys can rewatch the the entire webinar we had uh, with with Andrew, uh, which goes over this particular study uh, in depth. Yeah, and I'm only a touch on it lightly now, so I do encourage you to go look into the full study. But just uh, if you missed that webinar at a high level. Uh, local SEO guide. They were they wanted to figure out what is the what is correlated to high rankings on uh, local search on Google, and so they partnered with the University of California's statistics department to help crunch data from thousands of businesses, looking at hundreds of factors that go into uh, that could be in the algorithm for Google to to improve those local rankings, and then they they studied and saw where where is their correlation, where is their not correlation. And the, the most correlated event um, is really the Google reviews count. So that top one, again, the, the, the color coding you'll see at the bottom is you know, there's things you can do on Google My Business Profile, things you can do on your website, things you can do off-site, and different linking strategies you could use. But you'll see that top one is the count of Google reviews. So if you can affect that, that's um, really, really highly correlated to you raising your, um, your rankings on Google. But then if you look at other things that, that relate to reviews, um, that, that first orange line will show total reviews. So even if you're not getting reviews on Google, getting reviews on other sites will, is correlated to you uh, getting higher rankings. Um, get, and then the bottom two, um, your Google rating does have some impact on your ranking and your overall average rating across other review sites as well. So uh, with, with four of these 10, of these top 10, right? Again, this is taken from hundreds of different factors that could go into to getting you better rankings on Google. Four of those top 10 really have to do with reviews, both on, on Google specifically and then on other review sites as well. So very, I was in a, a session when Andrew presented this to 30 uh, CEOs and executives of local search companies um, back in February, and I think you guys probably got it a little bit before then. So. Uh, really, we were just sitting in the audience. Uh, I was sitting there with our founder watching and we're really uh, pleased to to see what we felt uh, has been, our customers have been saying for a long time, which is getting getting a lot of reviews helps you get found on Google. Yeah, it absolutely does. It's, it's a huge effect. So then, uh, obviously, you, you're familiar with the map pack. Uh, the map pack's showing up roughly 93% of all local based search queries. So again, this is just to, to bring it all home. This is what where you go, this is where you could be seen 
uh, and the number of reviews is correlated. Now, you'll go do a search and see that you know it's not it's not a one to one correlation with the very most reviews is the highest rating because again there are you know hundreds of factors that go into that algorithm. What we're really looking at is what are the you know there's a proximity basis right? Whereas if someone's really close or a keyword basis in uh, in the your domain name may have a, a strong ranking in effect. But really on things that you can control and things that you can do, focusing on the count of reviews is something that uh, that you should be considering. So the the second value prop on our side is is, is getting chosen. So you know we know that if you get a lot of reviews, you're kind of moving up the rankings. But then there's the um, again the getting chosen. We, we I spoke about this in that earlier slide, so we'll we'll keep moving. But again, who would you choose in in this ranking? And uh, when you're when someone's looking and comparing three options on a map pack, uh, they're going to use those reviews to help make their decision. And then the final thing is, is gaining insight. So there's definitely a marketing element to review generation that is key. You know, helping you get more people walking in the door, more people calling the, um, on the phone. But there's also a, a, a sometimes overlooked purpose for these, uh, for gaining reviews, especially in smaller businesses, which is being able to get insights. Uh, you know, we uh, here we talk about the customer experience feedback loop. Um, you know, you're, you're going to make a transaction. People are going to leave a review. You, if you respond to that review and show what you're doing, um, then uh, and then share that internally with the, your uh, employees, then they can improve their uh, their output and their processes. So, for example, you go and look at uh, you know go look at all your reviews, and you see that people keep talking about the that the lobby is a mess and that it feels unprofessional. Well, now that's uh, some real operational uh, feedback that you can get. Whereas normally a, a business would have to send out a you know some type of a customer experience survey in a very formal process to try to get some of that data. But uh, these reviews should not just be used as a marketing tool, but can be used to get insights about your business to help uh, see what's what's really happening in the business uh, at, at all levels. Uh, some examples here is just the, this authentic feedback. Uh, you know, there's an anonymity with, uh, with leaving a review, which empowers a, uh, a consumer, yeah, their, their name is, is oftentimes associated with it because they do have to authenticate when leaving a Google review. They have to let uh, let people know who they are. They have to let Google know who they are, so it's not a fake review. But uh, again, they oftentimes feel empowered to leave uh, a true review of, of what their experience was like. And again, that is the, the that feedback can become gold to any business who's trying to improve their their operations. So now, now that we've kind of established the, the importance of online reviews, uh, and hopefully all of you are, are sitting there, you've all either invested in online reviews already and helping uh, you manage those reputations, or now after that you're saying, yeah, this is something I need to put a little bit more focus on. Uh, I want to talk about some traps to avoid because there are traps. Uh, I, really, I joined Podium uh, back in May of last year, and you know I was a little... Uh, naive to the review world. I knew what reviews were. I knew uh, what was going on. But since I've been here, I've seen uh, many. Uh, there's many flavors of of reviews, and there's just some at the highest level. There's a few traps that uh, that I've seen. I'd like to maybe illuminate for you guys as well. So the the first one is focusing on defense only. So with a uh, with a business, it's pretty common just to look at the reviews that come in. So let's say a review comes in and and you say, okay, that review came in, it's bad, so let me respond to that review and try to to, to take care of that. Uh, it's really good. People will see that you care about the negative reviews, but at that point you're not taking, you're really at the mercy of anyone who's leaving a review to go leave that review. And what, what happened in Duda's case early on was that they, they're a great company. They're, they're providing great service to uh, tens of thousands, if not more, customers that are having great experiences. But then really some of the, the negative feedback was a, a disgruntled employee hopped on and had said something bad because they were let go because they weren't performing. Or you know there was this minority that was kind of leaving this feedback. And when you leave it to just responding to those, uh, the, the consumer isn't always clicking on and reading every 
uh, all the context of every single review, uh, you know, they're looking briefly at that score to make that decision. So uh, on the focusing on defense only, uh, we encourage you to go offensively. Be asking your customers, uh, really all customers, to, to leave reviews for your business. And yeah, there's... Can I just, uh, oh, sorry. I, I just wanted to jump in with a quick point on this, too. Um, just just how the, the defense only, like, it's been my experience, too, um, that some sometimes uh, when I've left a critical review of a business, um, you know, I've had the business owner hop on there and reply to that review, and I know for a fact that what they're saying is different than what I experienced. And so now when I see business owners respond to reviews, I, I'm still a little skeptical. It, it doesn't always convince me, and I think other people are the same way. And if you just see a lot of critical reviews and a lot of that, that owner responding to it, um, it's, it's not enough to push you over the edge to make a buying decision, at least in my experience. And so um, focusing on this alone can be a really poor strategy for that, and that's, there's a big weakness there, I think. Sorry, sorry to jump in there, Brett. Well, I think it's great. I, I think what we find is that people, we do, we do surveys to our customer base, and, and even not just our customer base, but to uh, groups of consumers. And we find that most people are willing to leave a review if, if they're asked to leave it. And so you may feel a little awkward on asking, a, you know, a client comes in and you did some work for them and they're happy with it. You may feel like it's self-serving to, hey, can you go leave us a review on this site? Uh, but they're more than happy to do it when they have a great experience. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask and to actually go out and uh, just take it head on. Um, there's a, a phrase that I use always is, is the solution to pollution is dilution. So a lot of times you, you'll you have a few negative reviews and you're trying to react to them. But if you just get more reviews from the, the, your true customers that love you, then pretty soon that's what happened with Duda is they're, you know, they didn't have to go and try to remove those negative reviews from their system. They just uh, created a lot more reviews and uh, that other, the, the negative reviews were diluted from just so much uh, uh, them going out and asking their customers to leave reviews. So first of all, take control. Um, make it easy for them to, to voice their positive experience and you'll be in a really good place. So trap number two is focusing on the wrong sites. So with uh, focusing on the wrong sites, there's, uh, there's, there's two thoughts of, of kind of reviews on how to, how to really collect reviews. One is to collect reviews on uh, some third party site that uh, would be like the review collection site so a review collection company can say, hey, we're going to send out a survey, and when, and when someone leaves a review, they'll leave it on our back end. And the, 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 the pros of that are, one, is that uh, getting using that content in marketing copy makes it very easy. So you could go take a review that was, let's say that, uh, you know, it's my company on ReviewSite.com, and I've got all my reviews on there then I can go grab those five-star reviews and go throw them up on my website and do certain things with them because there's not, uh, it's just very easy to go take that and to put it on flyers and to do certain things with it because it's all on one site. Uh, so that's one way to do it. And then there's still some SEO value, uh, especially if that company can go uh, get put on the knowledge panel on Google search. Uh, you'll see sometimes if you'll see a listing, you'll see there's Google reviews. And then below that, they'll say, these are Yelp reviews or here's reviews from XYZ company, you know, cars.com will have some reviews on there. And there is some value in getting those reviews from other sites like we saw in that getting found slide from local SEO guide, but, uh, but not the same type of value of getting them right on Google. So uh, with, with this one, uh, what we recommend is that you actually get your reviews on the sites that matter most, where your consumers can find you. I, I liken it onto putting a billboard in the middle of nowhere. No reason to go send reviews to a site where nobody's looking at and that's not going to make the phone ring or help people walk through the door. So as you, uh, as you uh, go and focus on, on getting the, re the reviews, go and, and focus on, on getting them on the places where they matter most. And the, the third trap that I've seen uh, people falling into is, is they've been focusing on the wrong way to send review invitations. So you know that you want to go get reviews now. You, you know you want to go be aggressive in getting them. So uh, the most people, there's one of the early ways they want to do it is, hey, I've got an email database. Why don't I just go and 
get everyone who's been my customer and I'll shoot them out an email and say, hey, here, go review me. And that's uh, that medium becomes a little bit less effective. So the graphic on the right here will sh shows that, you know, really it's less than 20% of emails are opened and uh, will get read, whereas with a text, 99% are read. So if you're actually trying to, to reach a customer to get them to leave you a review, you're better off going through text, really five times better going off through text than you are going through email. Just even from a, a view rate of people looking at it. Now the, the mobile device and with the right technologies, there's actually a lot more benefit because uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is auth authentication that happens with Google where they need to know who you are before they leave you, they let you leave a review. And uh, on a mobile device, you can um, authenticate with the Google user without having them to put in their uh, username and password again to go leave that review. So if you're redirected, that's just another benefit of going through a mobile uh, solution. So I really would highly recommend that as you're looking for both you and uh, your customers, if you're gonna go take them out and try to get reviews, you find a way to do it via mobile uh, because your results will be uh, so much higher. And yeah, email, is, it's kind of the easy way to go. It's, it's more familiar for most people to go do it, but uh, you're gonna be missing out on a lot of reviews. And kind of like we showed earlier, that count of reviews is really important. So every, every customer you have that comes in that doesn't leave a review is a missed opportunity to help you get, uh, get found on Google in the future. So just uh, uh, transitioning from there, um, you know, I, I run the partner programs here at Podium. Uh, we have uh, over 100 agencies that are, are using uh, our services for their clients. And the way that they use them uh, is the reviews in SEO. So they, the number one reason why agencies come is that they're offering some type of an SEO service and they want to help people, they want to improve their SEO service. So like kind of that local SEO guide um, study showed, like that's, that's why agencies are using this, to help it in their, their SEO offerings. Second, they're using them in their pay-per-click options. So uh, if you're running PPC campaigns for people, you know that uh, if you're able to use that ad extension with reviews that you can increase your click-through rate, which will then decrease your cost per click. So they'll want to come in and use it because they're running pay-per-click campaigns and want to be more efficient and driving reviews helps them lower their costs um, with AdWords. Uh, three is websites. Uh, people are taking those reviews and you, leveraging them on their website. Uh, we have a, an HTML widget that can be put on a website to really help uh, show a stream of the, of the positive reviews that are being left about a company so that these agencies are coming and using it for that. Um, they're using it in their other media. So uh, you know, as I drive down the highway, we're here in Salt Lake City, as I drive down the highway, uh, you'll see big banners out in front of businesses saying, you know, top rated uh, car dealership on Google or top rated <laughs> dentist. And so people are using it in, in, I've heard it in radio spots, people are using it in their print. Uh, they're using it across all their marketing materials and really at the highest level, uh, uh, good reviews help, they're a magnet in the funnel. They, if, if you're running a, a, a print um, direct mailer for your customer and then people go and, and find that direct mailer and they go into Google and type in that company's name, if they see that it's a 2.4 star rated company, they'll just say, ah, that's too much. I'm not going to take a risk by having them. Like, the, the, it, it's actually a, it, it will pluck them right out of the funnel. So they use it just to help be, make all of their other marketing efforts become more efficient because that's what a good reputation does. Is it, it makes everything else uh, in the marketing mix become more uh, stronger. So kind of on, on podium side, uh, this is a, one of our t-shirts here, got 99 problems but reviews ain't one. Um, that's the pain that we take out of businesses is our, our technology and our solution helps, uh, helps business owners gather uh, really the, the reviews at the highest rate um, that's out there in the industry. So uh, uh, there's, the, there's a delivery method that uh, and, uh, obviously through text, uh, that's the data all shows that that's where it should go. So it's a text delivery system. And uh, what you're seeing here is a backend dashboard. So we have really deep analytics to show what's been happening, to set goals, to have leaderboards, to help uh, encourage employees to go and 
uh, send out these texts to their customers. You can, you know, we pull in all the reviews from from all the sites, allow you to respond to those reviews from in our app. Um, really, uh, a really powerful system for both collecting and managing um, the feedback from customers. Uh, this is just a brief uh, screenshot of the process. Again, it's pretty simple. A text goes out uh, on our side. Um, we have a texting app as well as we have integrations that will automatically send out these texts uh, based on other systems that a customer is using. We then will take them to a, a, a system where we say, hey, do you, have a, uh, do you use Google to leave your review? And from there, we automatically authenticate and drop the, the end consumer right on the right page for someone to just click the star rating and leave that review. So again, our removing friction is really what Podium does, is we make it very, very simple for that consumer to leave that review for the business. So again, uh, they're, they're better search rankings. The, these are why SMBs are using us, the better conversion rates, and better insights. Uh, not too long, but just uh, some general case studies across a few of our verticals. Uh, you know, Devon's came on, and as they, they, uh, they came on and have 228 reviews very quickly, get the 4.6 rating, 152% increase in reviews. In the auto space, we'll see total reviews since joining 1,700. And you know, auto is actually a really hot space for reviews. Um, they, they, everyone's kind of fighting for position there as they've realized that it helps get more people in the door. Um, in health, a 583 just in the first couple months of joining. And then uh, even you know, at a car wash, you can get hundreds of reviews if you do it the right way. So uh, now to, to your point, you guys are agencies. Uh, you guys, uh, as we have these hundred agencies that are working with us now, they use it to wow their clients. Really, Podium Store works right out of the gate. Uh, within the first month, they're getting 10 times more reviews than they've ever had before and are just very, very impressed with the agency. Um, there's obviously a revenue model associated with agencies where they can make some money and it just adds value across all of their marketing activities. Um, our partner program in general, uh, it's, a, it's a wholesale model for most, uh, we have a referral and a, a reseller model, but the reseller model um, really get, lets you buy Podium at a wholesale rate and then you sell it to your, your client at a retail rate. Uh, we then certify you, show you how to get it set up, how to um, strategize with the client on how to use Podium to get the most reviews and we give you a dedicated account manager who will work with you on webinars, sales calls, anything you need with your client. And then uh, finally, just uh, what, uh, kind of rolling out the red carpet for Duda agencies, is that just for, for being here on the, the webinar, uh, we'd like to give you a free license for your agency to use. This is a, a no strings attached license where you can just use it to, to go ahead and become the highest rated agency in your area. And go and fill it. This is similar to what we did with Duda. Let you come in and, and see the power of it. it. It works, and it works fast. Now, we built it for, as, for a B2C um, market, so it's meant for, the obviously, the more invitations you send out to customers, the more reviews you get and the more value you get from it. Uh, but as we saw with Duda, the, uh, a B2B co company can use it and get results. Uh, just know that when you take it out to your customers, as they see more customers of their own, they'll get more reviews. Uh, the second one is we have the certification to, to get you onboarded. Um, we give you, um, if you're interested in becoming a partner, then we'll cut that in half uh, and knock it down to $250 one-time amount to, to certify. Again, that comes with three hours of, of certification training on our side as well as uh, a, a long tail of support. And then the final value is if you do go ahead and get started with Podium, then for every client you bring on in the first 60 days after signing up, then we'll actually send you or uh, someone at your company, whoever you designate, a $200 gift card for every client that's brought on. So uh, really, um, we want you to be successful as an agency, both to getting more customers to come in for your agency, as well as to be able to offer uh, a solution that really works for uh, your customers well, that you can be proud of and can make it work. And that's we feel really proud of what we've built so far and uh, really hope to be able to help as many uh, businesses uh, with their online reputation as possible. So if, if, if you are interested to, to learn more, then there's, there's two easy ways to do it. One is just open up your email right now and type in partners at podium.com 
and put learn more in the subject line. And if you do that, then I'll have one of my partner managers reach out and they'll give you a, a, a full demo. You can see it for yourself and uh, they'll be able to uh, get you set up either with your free account or get you set up on the partner program, uh, whichever one you're interested in. Or if you wanna, uh, you'd rather submit it through a form, then just uh, you can go to this, uh, this URL and go ahead and just input your, your contact info and we'll, we will reach out to you. Uh, just know that uh, this offer is gonna be valid through April 30th, so if you go ahead and shoot us an email and get started before April 30th, then that's when uh, we'll, we'll honor kind of this red carpet treatment and then after that it'll just kind of be business as normal on our side. So again, thanks uh, so much for, for being here and uh, would like to, to send it back to see if there's any questions. Thank you, Brad. Real quick, uh, just let everyone know I'm uh, putting both the email address and the URL into the group chat. So uh, you guys should uh, have both of those links for the partners at podium.com as well as the, uh, the URL to submit your contact info. So both of those are in there. And uh, the, we'll also include this in the, um, in the follow-up email as well so that you guys have it. So uh, thank you, Brad, for such an awesome uh, presentation. I, you know, I, I want to remind everyone that um, you know, we at Tito, we really think that this is something that's that's valuable uh, for agencies like um, like you guys, our, our resellers. This is a you know the type of service that we feel brings value to you guys as agencies and can help you guys become more successful. Uh, this is the sort of thing where if you become a higher rated agency, you're going to get more customers, you're going to sell more websites, and you're going to make your customers happy, you're, you're going to make more money, and then that's going to bring more websites back to Duda. So this is a win-win for us. Uh, so we, we feel that offering and introducing you guys to services like Podium uh, is just, just a win-win all around. So definitely happy to, to have Brad here and, and, and hear um, a bit about online reviews. So. Uh, if you guys have questions for Brad or for me about Duda, feel free to go ahead and type those into the questions box. We're going to transition to the Q&A part now, so uh, feel free to go ahead and ask away. Let's take a look here. One of the first questions is from Bill. He says, on Facebook, people make posts. How do we differentiate posts from reviews? How do we get them linked to our website or Facebook page? Yeah, good question. So uh, on Facebook side, uh, you know, the, the posts are different from reviews on their, on, uh, on just in their ecosystem. If you did a Google search for you or one of your customers and there are Facebook reviews, you'll actually be able to go in and see maybe like a fifth, sixth, seventh uh, result down there is a Facebook uh, link linking someone to your Google, your Facebook reviews. So they, they are different, obviously, than a post because uh, they, they become searchable at that point. Now, we've been, as part of Podium, um, our philosophy is to work very, at a high level with all these review companies. So we, we go to Facebook headquarters, we go to Google headquarters, we go to Yelp headquarters, we talk with them about what they're trying to do and what's going on. And uh, with, uh, with Facebook there, you know, they're gearing up to, to make that a more meaningful part to make it more differentiated on their side um, and have it be a more meaningful part of the experience. But for now, our customers, uh, they, they, Facebook is the second most popular uh, place to drive reviews to behind Google. And uh, yeah, because it, it, there is that differentiation from a post to a, to a review, especially on the search side. Good. Um, now, Tori's asking, uh, if you offer white label services? Yeah, that's a great question. On, on the white label side of things, there's uh, usually when I work with an agency, there's, uh, the main reason somebody would want to work as a white label is because they want uh, to be protected against any pricing integrity, right? They want to make sure that a customer doesn't go around them and try to go to Podium directly to get a better price. And, uh, uh, and white labels are a way to protect that. So what, when I came on, um, we had done a few white labels. The issue with doing white labels is that it becomes such a heavy load on the development team and the product team that it slows down our innovation on our side. So what I, I went to the sales team and said, look, guys, I need to, to have 100% confidence in our pricing integrity and to, to make sure that our partners can win 
with uh, offering it at a retail price and that uh, a consumer can never come to us after talking to a partner and make the partner look bad by getting a lower price. And that's something that we're committed to. So we don't offer a, a white label solution. What we do offer is price, uh, pricing integrity and a way for, for, uh, for you to not get burned in any of those situations. And we do have, a, really all the time, we have uh, partner customers calling in trying to make sure that they're getting a, a good deal with their agency and uh, we're, we have a system in place to be able to, to make that work well. It always goes back to the agency. We talk to them and send them right back there and it works really well. So um, okay. we, we've thought through the, that process and you know the, the benefit to of not having a white label is that then they believe that you're, you created the solution and if there's any question or issue in it, then it makes for an awkward conversation with them. So we find that as long as we can take care of that awkward situation that uh, an agency usually would prefer to not uh, not deal with the white label, to just know that, you know, treat it almost like an AdWords. Like this is a solution that's helping drive a result and we're the experts because we've been trained in it to know how to best execute it, not just for you, but for you within the context of your marketing mix. Great answer. Uh, real quick, uh, Craig has two, uh, a couple of comments. One, he says that's a pole barn, not a garage. And that you're giving your, oh, your away your age with those stills of uh, pitfall. I think. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Craig. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, um, with with uh, my age, I definitely uh, am one of the older ones here at Podium. We're about 150 people, and uh, I, I definitely classify. I think most of the, the people here wouldn't really get the reference, but uh, I'm glad for those of you who are closer to my age that can actually understand it. <laughs> uh, Thorsten is asking, uh, will it work with different languages, for example, German? So it is in Spanish, I know for sure. Um, I, I haven't heard of us having a, a German customer, but uh, go ahead and reach out to us and we'll just give you the truth on what its capabilities are and, and what, how it could work. Really, on, on our side, at least on the sending of the review invitation, so remember, there's this text that's going to go out that's going to send it. That's the real power of what's going on. Um, that that can be customized to be um, in any language you want. You get to write that message even. it's uh, We have a base message, but you can change it. Um, but then we'll have to walk through you on the process of, you know, that, that one interstitial page that says, you know, do you want to leave your review on Google? We'd have to see if that can be put into German. But uh, even if you see Google on there with a yes, from that point, I think it would rotate all the way through. So reach out to us, and we'll we'll go and troubleshoot with you and see if it would work for what you're trying to do. Uh, Craig is asking if there's any legal issues by sending unsolicited texts, or are you safe because the customer provided their cell phone number? Yeah, great question. That's uh, at the heart of, uh, of what we do is when we're sending these texts. So with the texting laws, there's uh, there's marketing texts and there's information texts, and uh, you know, marketing texts are not allowed, but information texts are um, under those guidelines. And the question is, what is this text, right? Is it information or is it marketing related? And what uh, on our side, we know it helps your marketing, so that uh, there's a purpose of marketing with the content that's going on. But as we see our customers, they actually will use this to replace their customer experience um, recording. So they're actually using this to gather valuable data to operate their business on. So it's actually uh, the information that's being gathered is very informational. How was your experience? That's information. Um, then you use that information to go market it. So we have uh, 8,000 locations. We've never had any um, any real legal questions ever come up on it. Uh, but we are we look at that TCPA guidelines. We feel very comfortable with where we we sit uh, in those guidelines. Um, the other thing that you should know too is that there's not a text sequence that goes on with what we do. There's not the first text, and then three days later you get another text. So it's a, a single text that that goes out. And again, in most cases, uh, there's two ways somebody gets a text. One is you're face to face with them, and you say, "Hey, thanks for uh, working with our establishment. Can I shoot you over a text, and you can leave us a review?" And the person says, "Sure," and gives them it verbally, and they tap it into this app that's on your phone. Uh, that's half of our reviews go out that way. Uh, the second half of the reviews go out through an automated us, again, tying into your CRM or a point of sale system or other management solution. And with those, um, obviously the, the customer has already um, given their 
their phone number to that uh, that business and expect some type of contact through that. Excellent. Um, another question here. Bird I sent out info this week that aggregating Yelp reviews is now a premium because Yelp is charging them for that access. How are you handling this? Yeah, it's very interesting. We, we are a Yelp uh, knowledge partner, as is Bird Eye. Um, uh, we, with Yelp, uh, soliciting Yelp reviews is not permitted. Um, this is a, a Yelp guideline that we actually fully understand and as a part of them um, support. So on our side, we actually do not solicit um, Yelp reviews so that we can stay in compliance with kind of what Yelp is looking for. Um, on with with that being said, we do have a very tight relationship with Yelp, and we'll continue to work with them on um, really just the future of of how how they want to handle not just reviews. Really, with Yelp, it's more about uh, driving engagement through Yelp, not about getting reviews on Yelp. So when we talk to our customers about Yelp, we don't say go get reviews on Yelp. We say drive customer interaction, drive interaction with Yelp, and they may leave photos, which is very valuable on Yelp side. Um, they may uh, check in, which is also valuable, but uh, um, to drive that Yelp, those Yelp reviews is not something that, that we promote or tell our customers that they should be doing. And again, because uh, of, of Yelp's policies around that, um, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's okay. not permitted. So we, we, we stay away from that. Great. Uh, DW is asking if your system works with Amazon reviews. No, our, our system doesn't work with Amazon reviews right now. Um, we've we've looked at some of uh, some tweaks to kind of look into the product mix, but there's just some uh, technical limitations on Amazon side to be able to drop people to the right spot to be able to go and leave that review. So uh, right now, um, if you're trying to drive uh, reviews on Amazon products, then Podium isn't isn't set up to do that. Christian is saying, "Wow, great gifts," and I have to agree. Uh, a free, a free license for your agency to uh, to use Podium and become the highest rated agency in your area, I think, is an awesome gift for showing up to the webinar. In addition to the uh, discount on certification, in fact, Craig even points out that each every gift was such a great gift that they're all number one. Craig, you certainly have an eye for details. <laughs> you notice our, our bullet point errors there, so that's great. Um, uh, John is asking, what is certification? Yeah, so certification comes into into three parts. First, we kind of uh, show you how to use the backend system and how to set up clients, archive clients, um, set up their backend systems. The second piece of the certification is on sales. So we give you all of our sales scripts on our side, all of our marketing materials. Um, as part of the sales certification, we actually will have one of our sales reps um, uh, be on the line with you if, if you want if you want to take advantage of it and listen to them talk through Podium and the value proposition with one of your customers. And so it's a joint call with, with kind of our salesperson leading. And then a second call is with you leading and them listening to help you get familiar with the pitch and to, to handle that. So the second training is all about sales. Um, and then the third one is about implementation. So we do a strategy call with every uh, customer. So we really show you what those strategy calls look like. Um, again, we, we will let you sit on our strategy calls with uh, with customers if you want to hear it or, or help you get your first few onboarded so that you know really uh, on the strategy side of thing it's how do we work with the customer to get them to send out these invites like where's the right moment in their sales process to send out this review invitation and I did that with Duda early on which is should you should you send out a review invitation right when you sell somebody a website <laughs> or should you do it after they call in and are asking for support or where in the process is the best one and that's the type of of training, and which that last one is, how do you onboard your customers and support them in the best way? So each each one is uh, is you know formally about an hour, but you have a dedicated account manager who's going to help you as well. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier they'll run through a, a webinar if that's something that you can do. Let's say you have 20 clients, then they'll say, hey, if you want to do a little webinar to announce it to them, then then let's you know let's create that together. So uh, the the, the certification is the whole thing, but those those main three. Uh, sessions are what we consider certification. When it's done, we we certify you, and then let your when a customer calls in, we say, "Oh, you want to? This agency is fully certified. Like it, they can. We'd recommend you go through an agency over us because 
they not only know how to, to onboard you the same way we would or sell it to you and sell the right customers, but uh, they know your other marketing uh, mix and can make this work with everything else you're doing. Great answer. Um, Malcolm's asking if this will work with overseas clients. I think you already touched on this a little bit about the German. Um, yeah, uh, the, but oh, overseas, yeah. Um, like I, I was actually in London last week with a partner there, um, really launching our London, uh, our UK version of this. And so there, there's a little bit, di there's a, a slight difference in when you're overseas in that uh, the image in the text is not permitted in the in the texting in, in these other countries. So it will just be the the text in the link. Uh, that, yeah, the words in the in the text will go out, not the image. But it's still we have um, a fair number of international clients in Australia and the UK that are English speaking that it works well for. Excellent. Uh, let's see. It looks like Christian's asking if you can show um, reviews in Duda. Um, and I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, yeah, you can show reviews in Duda, and I think as Brad mentioned earlier, uh, they do have like a uh, an HTML widget uh, that you could embed to show uh, reviews as well. So if you're going to embed something like that inside your Duda website, you just use the um, the HTML widget, uh, custom HTML widget that lets you put that custom code uh, to display their widget, and you'd want to make sure it fits in well with your website. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, you know, our Yelp reviews would do as well. Um, so uh, some combination of those might work for you. Uh, Mike is asking, how much is the service? Yeah, the, the service retails at $299 a month per location. And th there are uh, other, some verticals that the pricing varies a little bit. And as you kind of talk to us uh, on Talk to your partner manager. He'll let you know if, if you're in a vertical that has a little bit different pricing. But if you look at standard pricing, $299 a month per location. Mm. Jose is asking, what is the tactic with the highest success rate in terms of getting your customers to provide a positive review? To get the customers to, to leave a positive review? Mm. Um, I mean, the, the, set, the answer there is pretty simple. It's just to be great, right? <laughs> like we want all of our, our, our customers to, to be great. We're not trying to pull one over on anyone. That's not really why Podium was created, is to, um, to shield the bad reviews, per se. It's, it's, you know, be great. What we find is back in the day, we actually used to have a, actually a gating function to our product that would ask, the very first question would ask somebody is, would you recommend this business, yes or no? And if they said, no, I wouldn't recommend this business, we'd take them to go leave private feedback. And we, if they said yes, we'd go take them to leave a public feedback on our review site. But we actually uh, terminated that uh, option here recently because what we found is that by putting that gate up, we were lowering the, the review response rate by 20% by just making an extra click in the process. And the amount of people that leave low reviews, less than 2% of the people were clicking on that no button. And if you averaged all the reviews you were losing that would have been positive with the reviews that would have come in as negative, like two-star ratings, then you actually are hurting your score because you're missing out on all those positive reviews. So at the highest level, the Podium's philosophy is send the review invitation to everybody. Um, to, you know, you can use a system to do it. Uh, you, you will see more reviews, which will help your rankings, and your overall rating won't go down because uh, – because you're just getting more reviews total. Um, well, those are some great stats and great analysis of that conversion funnel. That's that's awesome. Uh, let's see. CJ's asking if there's a way to post reviews to multiple sites simultaneously. Uh, no, that's not something that we do. Nor is it uh, really kosher to do. Uh, when you go and, uh, as you know, as a marketer, content is king, and uh, Google and Facebook and others, they want unique content on one. And if they see that you have the exact same review on two different sites, then they'll say something's up and they'll degrade, uh, they'll degrade that review. And it won't be uh, as, as impactful. So uh, really what Podium has solved is that we're able to get so many reviews that you can spread the love uh, to other sites, but it's one unique review per customer is, is what's gathered. Um, you know, you can change through the sites and put different weights on different sites or importance, 
so that you're getting, you know, you could focus this month on getting Google reviews and Facebook reviews next month. Um, so we that that is a possibility, but again, one unique review um, per customer is the best practice. Okay, Jennifer is asking. Uh, she says, "I have reviews on Thumbtack, and I'm now starting to utilize Yelp. How would I bring them into this program without it looking like I posted them myself on other platforms? They are already verified." So if you yeah, if you have reviews on Thumbtack or Yelp, then that's awesome. Like the, that's great. Like we actually, you know, you should get, you should keep getting those reviews. Our backend management system can actually pull in those reviews, so you can see what's going on with them. And with our system, we're, we're this would actually, like, let's say Thumbtack, for example, we have a way where if there's a, a site that's um, not one of our primary sites that you find important to get a review on, then we have a way for for you to put that as a top priority. So if you wanted to drive more reviews to Thumbtack because that's a strategy that you want to implement, then that's something that we can work with in the setup uh, with you or one of your customers to, to be able to put that as the, a top option that comes in. Um, uh, yeah, you don't need to throw away your, your other reviews. Like those reviews will still keep coming in, like let's say your Yelp reviews. Um, you know, what, those will come in naturally over time. Again, we don't solicit to the Yelp review side of things, but uh, you know, the, the other platforms we can help you uh, generate more of those reviews. And again, we believe at the core you should have review, a balanced review portfolio. That was one of the slides, which is we don't think you should have all your reviews just on Google. We think that you should have a lot on Google. You should go get a, a lot on Facebook. You should look at other industry-specific sites like in the medical space. You know, um, you know, we have certain sites that we recommend people post to and you know, home services, we have different ones. So yeah, there's, we want you to have a, a balanced portfolio as far as reviews. Okay, great. Uh, so Tessa is asking with Castle, C-A-S-L, Canada's anti-spam law, what do you think is the best way for companies to get clients to post reviews on Google, Facebook, or Yelp with that new anti-spam law in Canada? Yeah, with, uh, I don't, I'm not personally familiar with that anti-spam law in Canada. What I do know is we have a lot of customers in Canada and, um, I, as, as we dig into it, we'll make sure that we're compliant. That's a big part of our business is we're on the up and up. We are white hat uh, player in the space and we only want to do things that are um, going to benefit you and your customers. We don't want to put anyone at risk. So um, I think talk about that with the partner manager because again, I, I haven't, they'll probably have to go dig in and see what our legal team is looking at at that law and how it's working. But uh, I feel confident that, um, that we're, we're playing in the rules but again, let's let's double check that when we uh, when we can dig into it deeper. Yeah, good answer. Uh, Philippe is asking, can we get a replay? And so, so is um, someone else. So yeah, we uh, we will email a replay to the webinar to everyone who registered today. So uh, you guys will receive that uh, in the email tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nora is asking, does the review grade come with a subscription? Not review. Sure. So review grade, it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I think he may know a little bit more about Podium than some. Is so we have a, a secondary. Um, it's it's more of a marketing tool. It's called Review Grade. What you do is you go and type in one of your customers' uh, web or company name, and we'll go look at. We'll pull all the reviews from Google and Facebook and all around, and, and then aggregate all that data into an overall score on based on how many reviews you have, your quality reviews, the length of your reviews, and other key factors, and spit out a grade um, so that you can see how your customers are doing. And that's part of our onboarding, kind of the certification, is we show you review grade and let you run that for your customers. Review grade as a, as a tool, so that will be, that'll be made available to you in our partner program so that you can use that to look up all your customers and see how well they're doing in a quick and easy way. Uh, but on the kind of a product note is we are building review grade into Podium itself so that a consumer could actually, or a, one of your customers could actually log into their Podium account, click on a review grade link and see where they stack up and where all their competitors stack up against them on every element of a kind of a review strategy. Fantastic. Uh, let's see, Urban's saying yes, since you just joined the webinar. Yep, we're sending out a replay. 
Um, John is asking, can we upload a CSV to Podium to send the first text? Is there a second text as a reminder that can be sent as well? So yes, you can upload the, a CSV file. Um, there are some best practices that we'll walk you through on that, which is we don't want to, if you have a, a list of a thousand customers <laughs> or even hundreds, we want to be mindful about what that conversion rate will be because you don't want to see 50 reviews all on one day and then none for a month, right? Because then just as consumers look at it, they're going to say, hey, what's going on here? Is this real or not real? So we want to be, uh, you know, a lot of times with those CSVs, we just want to make sure we get the right number put in at a time of files and then maybe uh, do that as a slow rollout for a month. So, uh, yeah, but yes, that, that functionality is there and really at the highest level that decision will be yours. We'll give you guidance on what we've seen work and not work, but how you send out those review invitations um, will, will be up to you. And then there was a second part of that question. What was the second part of that question? Yeah, is there, if there's a second text to send as a reminder that can be sent. So there's not a second text. Um, we, we could, if we wanted to override, like in that bulk process, override it and send out a, a second text. Uh, but like I said, just based on some of those texting laws, we don't want to be spammy and keep hitting them again and again uh, with texts. We, you know, we find that our conversion rate's really high with that first text because of the, how often people are opening a text and how easy it is to click a link on there. So, um, uh, so we, yeah, we don't offer that, that second text. We do, however, on the, on the mobile app that we have, if you were to put in a second number to text them, let's say you sent someone a text uh, a week ago and now you want to send them another text today, um, it would actually pull up a prompt on the screen that says, hey, you sent this person a text seven days ago. Are you sure you want to send them another one? Uh, so we want to remind you to, to be mindful of how you're, you're texting out your, your consumers so that you don't, again, we don't want to bug our consumers. We want to give them a chance to provide honest feedback. Smart. Okay. Richard is asking, if I were able to add the widget to my website, does that lead to a star review rating associated with my website listing on the, on the SERPs? So with, uh, when, you, when you put it on, on your website, all it is is it's pulling in the reviews uh, based on a, a star filter that, that you're, you're able to set in that widget. And uh, because it's in its own HTML widget, it's not doing anything with your search engine rankings. It's really just a marketing tool on your website. Right. Um, Mike is asking, uh, the agency model indicated a 20 to 40% discount. Is there a set monthly price and does Podium bill me and then I invoice my client? Yes, so the 20 to 40% is based on volume. Um, so that, that just to be clear on kind of why the range is if you're doing a higher volume then you can get a, a steeper discount. And yeah, the, you would sell it to your customer and then at the end of the month we would uh, bill you for that wholesale rate um, is that standard. If there are other ways, we do have uh, referral programs uh, in place so that if, if that's your model, then we can go down that path. And there are a few outlier cases. So um, on, you know, they, people want us to bill the customer, but then do some other um, different things. But the, the base model, what 90% of our agencies are doing are, are there in that reseller model, just p paying the wholesale price to us and charging the customer the retail. Okay. And then kind of related to that, Ron is asking, how do you show the value at two ninety nine each month over a long period of time? Yeah, the uh, the value is in the that total total reviews is very impactful, right? So if you go back to the early SEO days, people who were able to have the right uh, links pointing to them were able to reign supreme at the top of Google search rankings for a long time, and they were able to build uh, million dollar businesses off of just being the top ranked business on Google. And it took the rest of the world many years to fall, to catch up and to figure out what was going on before they got, they were able to chase them down and run them down. So with reviews, it's the same thing as if you have a lead and you, you have the most reviews and that is helping you get the highest ranking up on Google, then you don't want to ever let off the gas of that because other people are going to be chasing you. And if you have a lead, it's, it's easier to protect that lead than to have to go chase somebody else down for that lead. So, the, there's the overall number is something that to focus on and that's you know the, the day's gonna come when everyone has thousands of reviews on their site that day still may be five years away but what are you doing for your own agency as well as for your clients to help give yourselves the big enough lead 
so that when everyone else catches on to it, that it'll be much harder for them to catch you. So that's that's the first kind of value proposition. The second one is recency of reviews is a big deal. Um, again, go back to your own browsing experience, and you're going to go, you know, choose a place to go eat, and you're going to look at some reviews. You will look at the recency of those reviews, and if you see that that no one's left a review in a year, then you kind of discount those ratings. Like, what's going? What's happening? Like, how come the only last positive review is a year away from now? So, recency in our review grade, that's one of the uh, one of the factors in determining a healthy review strategy. Is what have you done recently? Um, and although there's no uh, strict data around, you know, no one knows the Google algorithm. Uh, we believe on this side that uh, that the recency of your reviews is an important part of of, uh, of how you get ranked as well. Excellent. Uh, let's see, Diana is asking, does Podium have Spanish support? Yes, we do. So we have both people here that speak Spanish to to help answer questions, as well as uh, that's the that's the one language, as I mentioned earlier, that that uh, is supported in the product. Great. And Sharik is asking if you have an affiliate program. I think you mentioned you have a referral program earlier, right? Yeah, the affiliate and the referral program, uh, same difference on our side. So yes, we do. Great. And Tori is asking. How do we access the free agency offer to try Podium today? Yep, just set, send that email to partners at podium.com, and that will that will prompt one of my um, team members to reach out, and then you can just let them know that hey, I, like let's uh, let's get me set up with the the free version, and they'll they'll help guide you through that process. And again, everyone, um, I will be sending out um, a replay. Uh, with uh, links to uh, to that URL and that, and that email as well. So um, some other people are saying uh, FYI, or LNN just said FYI, we just completed the online form. I catalysts, thank you. Uh, so uh, Craig saying great presentation, thanks very much. Um, Nora Irvin saying thank you as well. So lots of great feedback. Thank you guys all for joining. Uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, and listening to uh, myself and Brad today. Uh, thank you, Brad, so much for coming and, and giving a great presentation and taking the time to, to go a little over the hour to answer everybody's questions. Uh, we really appreciate that. And we really hope everyone listening uh, takes advantage of the offer. Um, we think Proteum's giving you guys a pretty generous offer with a free license to become a high-rated agency. So uh, please take advantage of that. And, uh, and uh, Brad, anything else you want to say? No, just uh, thank you so much for the, the partnership, uh, Duda. I think it's a, a great chance to, to share what we're doing as well as, uh, you know, even if you don't use Podium, uh, keep an eye on those pitfalls. Uh, really at the highest level, we just want uh, businesses to be able to properly represent what they're doing and to get the best feedback from their customers. So I'm glad you are able to sit in with us and, and wish you all the, the best no matter what you do. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, check out the replay. We'll also be posted resources at uh, dutamobile.com, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next webinar. Thanks again. Bye bye.